Okay, so now we're actually getting, in, getting into the forming of ions, which are both positive and negative. Um, it may seem a little more complicated at first, but as long as we have our periodic table set up right, and we just follow the columns, there's a definite pattern that forms. And this is gonna build on our electron dot models. You'll hear me say electron dot diagrams, electron dot models, okay? Just know that I'm referring to the same thing. Okay. What do we got here? We only have two slides. All right, first off, or maybe three slides. Here we go. All right, an ion is a charged particle. So if we have a different number of protons and electrons, it's gonna be charged. For example, if there's one proton and zero electrons, it's a one plus, because we have one positive charge and no negative charge. All right, if we have more negative charges than positive charges, then it's gonna be a, a negatively charged ion. So here we go, we have two types, cations are positive, anions are gonna be negative. So we'll notice that cations are formed by the metals. And on the periodic table, if you look at what you also drew on your color periodic table, the metals are on the left-hand side, while well, there's that jagged line, and the metals are here, and there's a lot less non-metals over on the right-hand side. So the stuff kind of middle and left is going to be a positive ion, and the stuff on the right, the non-metals, are gonna be anions are negative, they're gonna be gaining electrons. All right, think about, it. students get confused sometimes because- Mr. Hurst, could you come spent. up to the front office, please? Mr. Hurst to the front office, thank you. Uh, when we think of gaining things, we think of them getting bigger and positive, it seems like, but that's not the case. We're gaining negative charges. Negative, so be negative. Right. So let's go through some examples about how to do this. It takes me a few clicks here to figure this out. Here's our examples from the last slide. Okay. And we could do these, it might be good to, to go back and you can do these as an examples for ions also. So first off, let's take a look at Sodium, Na. If we take a look at sodium, Na is in the very first column, so it has one valence electron. Now, here's the question I always ask. So here we have one, right? I got to be ready to erase these, so. Okay, there's seven more spaces to put valence electron. So I always ask this question, is it easier to gain seven or to lose this one? Right? Would it be easier to gain seven of something or to lose the one? Right? It'd be, actually be easier to lose the one. It's basically less electrons to be messing around with. Okay, So this is going to go away. Right? And really what, what it's gonna happen, it's gonna go to a different element. Right? So, this has, we're going to draw no valence electrons around it now, all right? So it lost the one electron. So it lost one, okay? And if it loses a negative charge, it's going to be left positive. So when we look at sodium, I normally show this, it starts out with, over here, it starts out with 11 protons and 11 electrons. Over here, it's gonna have 11 protons, but it loses this one electron, so it only has 10 electrons. See, we have one more positive charge, which is why we put the one plus up there. Now, a lot of students will wanna put a plus one, but in chemistry, that's not how they write it. They write one plus, like one extra positive charge. Let's do our second example, calcium. Calcium is in the second column, so it has two electrons, valence electrons. 
Now, is it easier to lose two or to gain one, two, three, four, five, six, to gain six? Lose two or gain six? It's easier to lose two. I like to put ion just to make sure we know it's an ion. We're always gonna put these uh, brackets around the ion. It's just the conventional way that we do things. And it's going to have two less negative charges now. So just to show it one more time, it starts out with 20 protons and 20 electrons, all right? Only two of those are in the outer energy level, so that's why we have two valence electrons. Over here, we would have 20 protons, but we lost two electrons. Okay. So we have two extra positive charges. Let's do one of them now on the, the non-metal side. Okay. We'll do a couple, phosphorus and oxygen, which we already started to do. So those other two are for cations. These are going to be for anions. Phosphorus, for example, two right here, and oxygen. Oxygen. So phosphorus, we'll notice it's in the 15th column. We can't put 15 around here. We ax the one off the front, and there's five. One, two, three, four, five. So would it be easier to lose five or to gain one, two, three? It'd be easier to gain three, all right? So my ion is going to look like this. We're going to leave the dots, the valence electrons, and to show that we gain the three, we're gonna put those down as little x's because we gain three electrons. So we gain three negative charges, so it's a three minus anion. Now over here for oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six. I kind of did that wrong, but there's six valence electrons. It is in the 16th, 16. Get rid of the one, there's six valence electrons. So is it easier to lose six or to gain one, two? It's easier to gain two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, our magic number. So we gain two negative charges. So it's really not that difficult, okay, to show this. All right. We're always gonna show the original, and then we're going to show the ion that's formed, okay? Now, we already talked about a little trick here, right? When we're trying to figure out valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So what happens in our fourth one? So how about when we have like carbon? And there's one, two, three, four. Do you lose four or do you gain four? We ignore this one, okay? So the whole entire 14th column, 14th group, that has four valence electrons, carbon, um, and the rest all the way down to lead, we're not gonna have that as we're worried about this. Now how about this one over here, like uh, argon? In the 18th, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, there's nothing else to do. So it's already um, stable. So the 14th column and the 18th column, we're not gonna touch at all. Okay, so let's go back to this for a second. Right, this is the picture that you drew. I gotta figure out how to write on it. That's not bad. Mm. Make sure you write this on your paper. 
So find the periodic table, find the one that you folded. Remember the one that we folded it? I'll do this real quick. So by folding it, we were able to eliminate the transition metals, transition elements that looks like this. Hydrogen, beryllium, boron, uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then helium neon. All right, we're gonna write these above it. We're gonna write our ions. So the nice thing, it follows this pattern. So this is a one plus. This is a two plus. This is a three plus. This is nothing. This is a three minus, so three minus above nitrogen, two minus above oxygen, and one minus above fluorine. Then you have nothing over the last one because it does not form an ion. All right. So here we go. One plus, two plus, three plus, nothing. Three minus, two minus, one minus, nothing. It just follows this pattern. That's kind of the shortcut way of doing it. But the way I'm gonna have you do it for the assignment is by actually um, doing the valence electrons and then showing me the ions.